It's time to get inside the Giants huddle. Huddle up, huddle up, huddle up. On Giants.com. Here we go, here we go. And the Giants mobile app. Get them in there, let's go. Part of the Giants podcast network. Welcome back to the Giants huddle. I'm Paul Dottino. You can catch the Giants huddle on the Giants mobile app, Giants.com, and all of your favorite podcast platforms everywhere. Today we are joined by Giants offensive lineman Shane Lemieux. Now, this is a guy who is part of the Giants' retooling process. Last year, we know, devastating knee injury, cost him a lot of time, but things are looking up right now. And Shane, we welcome you to the program with a big smile to say, man, you are back, you're on the practice field, you're cleared and ready to go. How do you feel in these days, and what's your outlook? Yeah, thanks for having me, first off. But uh, I'm feeling feeling a lot better. You know, it's good being around the guys again, being back out there and uh, – doing all those football movements again you know it was almost you know eight months or so just watching and kind of um taking more of like a coaching role you know trying to help as much as I could when I was on the IR and uh it was you know it was different it was a different um job I had last year I had more of a mental side I was helping the O-line and you know, with scouting reports and that kind of stuff, but it's it's, uh, it's definitely good to be back out there. You were able to play a little bit after you got hurt in training camp with your knee. Yep. Got in that first game for some snaps, mm-hmm. then came out, and then it was before week two against Washington that you had the surgery and they put you down. Yep. So during that time period, how did you, besides working with your teammates as a coach or a scout, how did you keep your spirits up? Because it's one thing to be mentally involved in the game, mm-hmm. but some guys, when they get a devastating injury, lose their emotion. Yeah, you know, I think it was it helped me just being around the building, still staying, staying in the meeting rooms with the guys and just being around it. Because uh, I feel like sometimes guys get hurt and they kind of, you know, do their own thing. They're always in the training room. They never really see the guys. And um, being with the teammates just really helped a lot, you know, and just, just helping them as much as I can, still feeling like I had a role in uh, last year. And that really just got me through that. Let's look at the silver lining if we can. Mm-hmm. How much more did you learn about yourself and about the game of football by being in that spot? Yeah, you know, that was the first time I've ever had a surgery, ever been injured. So it was definitely a learning experience. But what I what I did, I basically gave a scouting report every single week for the opponents we were playing. So, And I, I have all that categorized now on my laptop and all my notes and stuff. So I have the same scouting reports for, you know, because Washington, we're going to play those, play those guys twice a year. We're going to play Dallas twice a year. So just having those scouting reports on hand and having kind of a, a notebook, you know, a digital notebook of all the guys, I think that's, that's really going to take my game to another level. So. so that will help you studying this year as yeah. you scout opponents that you're going to face on the field. Yeah, because, I mean, there's there's going to be some turnover with some defensive linemen mm-hmm. in, in our in the NFC East and around the league, but a lot of the guys, um, they're they're there. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna go anyway. As you make this comeback physically on the field, how much behind do you feel at all? Because you haven't hit yet. You're not allowed to. You know, yep. no contact during these spring drills. Mm-hmm. When will you know that you are fully back, fully confident that you can be the player you were when you left off? Uh, you know, it's it's right now. It's just shorts and t-shirts, right? And we got helmets on, but. Um, it's different when you got to actually come off the ball and hit someone, but just moving around right now, you know, it's, it's, it's a work in progress, you know, but I, I probably won't, I feel, I feel, you know, really good right now, but it's, I guess it's just a work in progress. There's not, I don't want to say like a timetable or anything, but once I get football pads on, it actually is real football. Then I'll know. Let me ask you about the new coaching staff, because obviously when there's coaching turnover, everybody has a little bit of indecision. They're not sure how it's going to work out, what's going to happen. What are your impressions so far of Bobby Johnson, the new offensive line coach, and of course, Brian Dable, the new head coach, and and what he wants to do with this team? Yeah, well, first of all, I think Dable is brought in just a really good energy. And then there's competition with everything we do. We have competition Wednesdays where the strength staff will put us through something. Uh, We have competition every single day on the football field. And it, you know it's just fun stuff like uh, like coaches going against coaches doing stuff. I think that's that brings a lot of excitement. But then uh, Bobby Johnson he he brings an edge to the offensive line room. He wants us to play physical. He wants us to play aggressive. And uh, something I like about him so far is that he coaches every specific player differently. So there's not there's not like one blanket way he coaches. He finds what everyone's best at, and he uh, finds you know ways of talking to each guy differently that kind of hits their brain. So how much does it help that? Johnson coached guys like Lewinsky and Feliciano mm-hmm. b- beforehand yeah. so that you could kind of get a feel for him through them. Yeah, you know, I think it, it's helped a lot so far with uh, John knowing the offense, you know, because the first time we went out there, everyone was hitting, hearing it for the first time. And John in the center, you got everyone say, hey, you're going here, you're doing this. And it kind of uh, eased us, a little, the rest of the new guys with with Coach Bobby. 
ease us out a little bit. But having those guys that know the technique um, and helping us, because it's, you know, Coach Bobby's doing a good job, but at the same time, we have, right now, we have a lot of time without the coaches. So it's good having Glinski and John to kind of just show us the techniques and help us out with that. How difficult is it to learn this offense? Glowinski told me last week that as an offensive lineman, he loves this scheme. Yeah, no, it's 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 nice once you get it down. There's a lot of lot of stuff that uh, from the start it seemed like a lot, but once you're getting reps and everything, it's it's settling down now. But uh, it's it's a good scheme. You know, it's it's going to be exciting. It's going to you know, uh, as an offensive lineman, I really enjoy it. Um, yeah. Without getting to specifics, because I'm not going to let the other people around the league know exactly what you're doing, but can you give us a generalization as to what the biggest difference is in this scheme compared to what we've seen in the past? I think uh, the biggest thing comes down to explosive plays. Um, that's our main goal, and our main goal is to score points. So we're going to try to get the ball, you know, in our best players' hands, and we're going to, you know, play fast with tempo and uh, just try to create explosive plays. You know, that's the biggest thing I think that we were lacking the last couple of years I've been here is um, not getting those. So that's obviously a big point of emphasis with this offense. Now, the year before when you got here, you started 10 games mm-hmm. as a rookie, uh, you know, in the guard spot for the Giants and obviously showed physicality, strength, and right out of the gate as a rookie showed you could play in this league. Mm-hmm. Where do you want your game to take the next step? Yeah, you know, before my, I don't want like to speak in the past, but last year going into training camp, I felt like I had my best camp and I was really confident and I was ready to go. And I think I just really need to rebuild to get myself back to that place because I felt going into this week one last last season, I was I was at the top of my game so far. Um, you know, but it's just being getting my confidence back. You know, it's getting out there, getting communication with the guys. Um, and I just want to be back to playing because when I'm when I'm healthy I feel like I'm I play fast and I play physical and I just need to get back to that don't miss your chance to experience a premier hospitality experience watching Giants games and world-class concerts in 2022 as a Giants suite partner limited full season locations are available or place a deposit for individual games call 888-NYG-1925 or visit Giants.com slash suites for more information what does it tell you about this coaching staff and these folks that when there is turnover and change hey, they've got you out there and you're competing for a spot. They're looking at you as a real contender because they must have liked what they've seen on film. Mm-hmm. Did you have to sell them at all as to what you are as a player? No, you know, I think uh, Coach Bobby, we, we talked a lot in the draft process. Um, and they, I know they liked me there. But it's they, they know what kind of player I am and I think they know what they're going to get out of me. They're going to get an aggressive player who plays hard. And I think I just got to show that every single day on the field, what they saw in college what they saw, you know, year one for me and just, you know, show, show them exactly what I am and keep bring the same uh, Shane every single day to practice. Well, we were, we were told by Mario Cristobal uh, when you got here that you are a guy who hates even to take a practice snap off. Yeah. So yeah. I know Bobby Johnson and company must love that attitude from you. Yep. Yeah, that's that's my guy, Cristobal, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we let you go, a couple of minutes we have remaining. How soon do you think it will take for the chemistry of the retooled offensive line to gel? I mean, before you know it, opening day is going to be here in September, and you guys need to be on the same page. Yeah, you know, from first week of OTAs to now, it's already, you know, night and day. So I think it's just a work in progress. You know, we're going to go through uh, training camp, and then, you know, by, I don't want to say an exact timeline, but it's going to take, you know, it's going to take weeks. You know, it's going to take some time, and we got to get our shoulder pads on, and we got to, um, get to know each other exactly how we're going to set, you know, how exactly we're going to come off the ball and stuff. So it's hard right now because it's just OTAs, but once we get into training camp, we'll get a better feel for everyone. How do you think you could help out maybe a young guy, even though you're not on the same side as uh, as Neil? Yeah. Can you give him some pointers? Because now uh, you're a seasoned veteran. I mean, you've been here a couple yeah. of years now. Yeah. It's just, you know, the biggest thing right now is learning the playbook, you know, and just have given him the little tips that I know about how to get stuff you know, memorized or how to look at things because he came from uh, Alabama. So a lot of things that we did at Oregon was from Cristobal. He was from Alabama as well. So there might be some, you know, some different or some same same schemes or same ways of learning things from college that he had at Alabama and I had at Oregon that can kind of blend in here. Because whenever I learn a new play, it's just different verbiage. Like everyone's ran something before. Everyone's ran power. We run, you know, it's uh, just just getting a little little, uh, tricks to kind of learn the plays. Maybe I can help him with that. And then just the techniques, everything. It's, it's a big jump. Even though he played at Alabama, it's a big jump, you know? It, so, yeah. And then finally, for, for, for you, 
uh, because you missed all that time last year, you mm-hmm. didn't get to play next to Andrew Thomas. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, before that you did, but then not last year as he mm-hmm. really took his game to another level. Do you yeah. guys have to re-familiarize yourself? Yeah, you know, we do. You know, we do. It's just it's, it's going to take live reps and training camp, you know. Um, but it's it's a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, because I do want to steal one more minute from you, mm-hmm. uh, there's a guy here named uh, Thibodeau. Mm-hmm. Who's from Oregon? Yeah, just so happens he was a duck. Yep. Uh, what can you tell us about what we should expect from this guy? Because the film is pretty obvious, but mm-hmm. uh, you were there at the practice field with him. Yeah, you know we um, back at Oregon we we got after it. You know we got after <laughs> it in the trenches. And Why I, doesn't that I surprise well. me? Yeah, because he was a great player and he came in and he was you know number one prospect in the country. And, you know, we iron sharpened iron back then. And I can't wait to have that same energy and that same competition here. But he's a great guy. He's very smart, as everyone knows. You know, he um, is a true – in college, he was a professional with everything he did. He took care of his body. He uh, competed the right way during practice. And I think he really got that defense going when I was – even when he was so young when I was there. So I'm, I'm very happy to have him here and I'm excited for the competitions and training camp. So is it fair to say, because there are players who almost will things to happen and make other players around them better by the way they do things. It sounds like yep. he might be one of those guys. Yeah, he's uh, definitely a leader of the way he works. You know, everyone's going to follow suit in the way he works, the way he takes care of his body, the way that he, um, I guess, prepares himself. Because in college... As a, as a freshman in college, he was a professional in that way. So it's going to be exciting to see that. I, I know he's going to move around a lot. Do you expect to be battling with him in practice much? I mean, you are in the oh, I'm inside. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. A guy like that, he's gonna, probably going to line up wherever. <laughs> exactly. You know, so I'm going to be ready for it. <laughs> Shane Lemieux, thank you so much for your time. Yep. It is so great to see you back on the field again. We wish you the best of luck this season. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Giant season tickets are on sale now for the 2022 season. In addition to ticket savings, membership benefits include access to exclusive events, experiences, pre-sales, and more. You can lock in your seats starting at just 100 bucks. Call 888-NYG-1925 or visit Giants.com slash tickets for more information. Welcome back to the Giants Huddle. I'm Paul Dottino. You can always catch this program uh, on the Giants app, Giants.com, and all your favorite podcast platforms. Today, we are joined by offensive lineman Nick Gates. And I can't believe it's five years now since you came out of Nebraska. It's crazy. It's been five How years How did it already. happen, by the way? I don't know. It's gone by so fast, especially being undrafted and everything. I'm surprised I'm still here after five years, to be honest with you. It's wow. I'm watching you grow old right in front of my eyes. I know. It's weird. I'm trying to stay young, but it's not working too <laughs> yeah, well. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> in any event, Nick Gates joins us. Uh, and folks, we, we all know about what happened last year. Uh, leg broken in multiple places, coming back. Uh, generically speaking, we know we can't get too much into detail because that's not the way uh, things are allowed around the league. But generically speaking, how are things progressing? It's great to see you walking around here. It's great to see you out, at least being able to watch on the practice field. I uh, know I'm doing uh, doing a lot better than I was, you know, even two or three months ago. So I'm finally starting to be able to do normal things that normal people could, like you just do in your normal life. So I'm finally getting back to that. You know, next thing is just starting to kick it off into football stuff and getting the getting the strength back and getting back to the baseline I was before. With every hurdle that you clear during the course of your rehab, does that improve and enhance your confidence level that you'll be able to make it back to the field? Uh, no, definitely. No, it definitely does. You know, it's just baby steps. You got to take baby steps in each day. And it seems like each week I'm gaining more confidence and, you know, I'm getting more uh, just like, like that little swagger back to me I feel like I had before. And, you know, it's coming back. How did you keep the emotions high? I just got done talking to Shane Lemieux, one of mm-hmm. your teammates, who himself suffered a pretty nasty injury last yep. year as well. Because, you know, it's so easy for a guy to turn the wrong way and mentally lose focus and lose his emotion for the game. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you have. Uh, no, definitely not. Um, the way I go about it, there's no, there's no point in being negative. There's just, negativity doesn't really do anything for you. It kind of hurts you more than helps you. And what happened is such a fluky injury there's i mean i can't control what happened to me i mean maybe i could if i didn't get hit with the wrong move with the move and you know maybe clamp down it wouldn't happen but it's so fluky it is what it is like there's no point in being negative about it what has been the most positive aspect of of your rehab in return i know richie Seibert, you and i have talked Mm -hmm. about a giant in the past who had a very similar injury to you has there been something that has kind of given you an extra lift or extra boost um 
Now, I talked to a couple guys, you know, Richie and all them since he had, <coughs> sorry, the same injuries last year, you know, same injury I had last year. Is, uh, he said it was, he had some complications and stuff, and it took him a little bit, but, he, you know, when he finally got back, he was good and played, I think, another, what, four or five years? Mm -hmm. Something like he that. And then won a Super Bowl, Bowl too. Yeah, he did, Nick. He won so, a ring. But I'd probably say the best thing that's coming from it, my patience has gotten a little better. I'm, I'm always been a little, little on the non patient side. So, you know, just with this, I feel like it just taught me patience and, trying to ask for help because I'm not big like I don't ask for things I don't ask I try to just do them all by myself and mm -hmm. I think this made me ask for and this made me be patient and stuff like that so all right so that's as a person what about as a football guy do you think you've seen stuff and learned stuff about the game that you didn't know before you got hurt um I I wouldn't say I learned too much when I was been hurt I just couldn't really be in meetings and stuff I was you know laid up in a bit, hospital bed or in my bed for I think it was like three or four months after the injury, and by that time, I think season was about done with. You know, I tried to go sit in as many meetings as I could, but it was kind of tough, and they won my leg up above my, you know, above my heart as much as I could. But um, I'd probably say I got closer with a couple of the different guys I normally wouldn't have, like Matt, Pert, me and him have gotten real close together, and, you know, just because we're in the same boat and we've been here together the whole offseason and kind of working together, so that's been nice. And just things like that. I've probably built relationships with teammates that I probably wouldn't necessarily have built as much with. I know there's no timetable, and I wouldn't pin you mm -hmm. down to one because, quite frankly, the doctors may not even have one for you either. Yeah. But but it's fair to say you're extremely confident that you're going to be back on the field because I see the way you work every day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, that's the end goal is to get back on the field and, you know, play like I, ha I was playing before. Um, it's tough. I don't know when I could, you know, when I'll be back or not be back. I'd even, like, me and my trainer don't even have a timetable. Like, we have, like, a goal. Like, we want to be back. You know, my goal is try to be back by – training camp but i don't know if that's going to happen or not you know that's mm -hmm. just you know i try to set goals for myself and you know i feel like it makes the end picture a little easier when you set goals for yourself but even at that point i don't know if i'll be back by then or not you established a lot of versatility from the mm -hmm. day you walked on to campus here with the giants mm -hmm. guard tackle obviously center as you prepare yourself in this comeback are you just saying to yourself, if I get back on the field, that's the win that I need? Doesn't matter where they put me, how they use me, or what position I might focus on? Uh, yeah, just like you're saying, I need to win if I get back on the field no matter what. It doesn't matter where, but I mean, I definitely I definitely like playing center a lot more now. I definitely got a lot more comfortable in there. And it's, uh, you know, mentally it's harder, but I feel like physically it's easier. It's more of a help position unless you got that head-up nose or that zero technique on you. But, you know, I uh, definitely like, you know, being the leader out there and being the guy that tells everybody what to do, it's kind of nice. Well, so. I, I, it's interesting you mentioned the leader thing because you were voted a co-captain mm -hmm. before last season, which obviously is a very prestigious thing in the locker room. The players vote for it. Mm -hmm. It tells you a lot about how they feel about you. Yeah. Have you had time to reflect on on the the emotions and the feelings that your teammates have expressed from the time you were named captain to the time they saw that you went down? Yeah, no, I uh, I remember I had a couple guys that come up to me after about th like probably three to five weeks after I got hurt, and they're like, "It's not the same out. It was same without you out there. Like your energy and stuff that you brought to the the huddle and the game, and just the way you played the game, and like they knew I was going to be there to protect them if something happened, or I was right. going to stand up for them or something happened." And, and they said it was just different when I got hurt. It's interesting you mentioned the the protection aspect because I can cite a number of instances where players took a little bit of liberties mm -hmm. with some of your guys, mm -hmm. and you were always right there. Yeah. Always right there. Even if they don't hit them or don't do it, if they, like when the quarterback slides and they jump over the top of them, like, they didn't hit them necessarily, but it's, that's just saying that, I don't know, I feel like it's like an intimidation thing to the quarterback, and that's not going to happen while I'm out there. And, and where did that come from? Because there would be people who say, well, he's not a 10-year veteran. You know, he's, he's not been in this league at all that long, but here you are, uh, young guy, um, you know, play multiple positions, but no, you're taking that leadership role. You're taking that assertiveness to say, mm -hmm. that's not happening to my guy. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've always just been like that. I've always been that uh, rowdier, like, protector guy. And I feel like that was just my role. Like, I'm not, everybody's going to think I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't feel like I'm not the best athlete on the field. I'm not the best player on the field. I'm not the best, you know, lineman on the field. But the way I, I feel like that's just my role is to be out there and be the protector and, you know, be, be that guy. How much do you think this new coaching staff coming in recognizes what you did on tape, your work ethic, what you mm -hmm. are as a person because they've seen you around here now every day and they're mm -hmm. getting a feel for who Nick Gates is? How important is that to you and do you think they see everything that you're about? 
No, definitely. They saw, you know, the film and stuff. They, they've they watched, you know, everybody. They told us individually they saw our film, and if they had to go back a couple of years, they saw you know, saw that film. And um, it's it's just hard for them to be able to, to count on me, you know, if I'm going to come back and play or not and stuff like that. So, you know, it's kind of like the next guy up. So, you know, John will get in there and be the guy, you know, mm-hmm. I think starting off, and which is kind of nice for me. I don't feel like I have to rush back and don't have to get back to be to be there. But, you know, I think it's good that, you know, they I think they know what I could do and they know I could play and, and you know, yeah. How much do you know about Bobby Johnson, the offensive line coach, since he's been here? Because clearly, even though you're not on the field taking snaps, you're still around him. You're mm-hmm. still going through meetings. You still know what's going on with his system and what he wants. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I feel like all the guys like Bobby. He's a he's a good dude. He's a. I feel like we can relate to him. He seems. I think he's only like forty. He's not too much older than us, and he just he's just a good dude. He cares about us. He cares. You know, wants us, wants us to do our job right. And you can tell like the way he coaches that he wants you to do it right and wants you to succeed. What in generic terms, I don't want to get specific, we don't want to let other teams mm-hmm. listen in and find out what's going on here, but generically, what do you think is different about his offensive line and what he wants from a line as opposed to maybe other things? Um, the three things he would preach is just smarts, uh, being known what you do, and just be tough. And I feel like those, if you could do those three things as a lineman, I think you could, you know, you could play. So that's like his three things he preaches and just being effort, like big thing on effort, you know, finishing down the field, finishing to the ball, or if the ball's, you know, 15 yards on the field and he's still up, you get, you better get your butt there and, you know, get around the ball in case it pops out or get that extra lick on a, a DB or something like that. That just, you know, they think about it when, you you know, later on in the game and they're like, oh, that kind of hurt. And you keep, keep on and keep on and keep on. And that's how I think you wear teams down and you break guys down. How much do you think it helps that even though this offensive line as a group has been retooled, some of the guys who are coming into the room already have experience with him? Mm-hmm. No, it's good. Just like John, he, he's been with him, I think, the last three years, and, and he knows the offense, and I think that helps us as a line that, you know, not all the other guys don't really know. They know what they're doing, but it's, it's you know, it's not like we've been in the system for three years and, you know, you just know it on a, right. on a snap. And it's it's nice to have when you have a center in there that knows exactly what to do and knows the plays and you could just point everybody and tell everybody what to do. I think that helps out a lot. Give me a, a second thumbnail capsule of what characterizes a Brian Dable practice. Up-tempo, fast. We're going to get our plays in, but we're going to be smart about it and we're going to get it done. How excited do you think you're going to be to get on the field at some point with this offense? Because I'm being told that this is an offensive lineman's dream to play in this kind of style offense. No, definitely. From what I've seen, it looks like it's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be, you know, creative. They, they it seems like they're real creative and they're going to do a lot of things to try to help DJ out and get those wide receivers open and things like that. Being a co-captain, by the way, and I know we're running out of time here, um, how much have you seen Daniel Jones's development grow over these last few years too? Uh, it's been it's been good to see him where he's trending upwards. I think everybody gives him crap about you know stuff, and I don't really think my personal opinion. I don't think it's all on him. I don't think a lot of it's on him. To be honest with you, last year there was last couple of years the line really hasn't been good, or last you know since I've been here the line really hasn't been great, and he has no time back there to throw the ball, and he's you know it's not like only one guy has to mess up their job, and it seems like he they're in their lap, and he he doesn't have time to get through his progressions, and he's really getting sacked. He has to roll out of the pocket and. You know, it's tough when you're like that. When you you have two seconds back there to get rid of the ball, it's and nobody's going to be able to succeed. I don't care if you're Tom Brady or Russell Wilson. I mean, it's hard. Well, I mean, look, even John Mara, the co-owner, has mm-hmm. said they had not done enough things to help him out, to mm-hmm. give him the best chance to succeed. And when Saquon Barkley had been hurt for so much as well, mm-hmm. you weren't getting that 2,000 yards out of, out of him yeah. that you had as a rookie. Oh, yeah, so exactly. th- this all impacts everything. Oh, it does. It's tough. It's tough when you, you know kind of you don't have to worry about the run and things like that it's they can play one dimensional almost all right final thing before we let you go again nick gates joining us uh you look at some of the other guys on the other side of the line of scrimmage this rebuilt defensive line too mm-hmm. front seven thibodeau old Jalari comes in last year looks like this is going to be uh, quite a front seven that people are going to have to deal with oh no definitely i, I know the inside three have always been tough since we, we've you know no doubt. I, since i've been here they got leo they had dalvin there for a little bit and now they have dex and they're big boys up front. You know, they're definitely hard to move, and they could, you know, they're athletic too. I think Dex what like three fifteen. He's moving like that the way he is and strong. He How? Be, I, I don't know. He's just gifted, physically just gifted. I think. So it's just crazy how Dex can move like that. Leo can move like they're that big. 
Man, it's uh, it's certainly something to watch every single day while we're out here practice. Nick Gates, it is so good to see you out and about, walking around, continuing your rehab. We wish you the best of luck, of course. Giant fans can't wait to see you back out on the field. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you.